KeithRockerVintageMachinery.org. Look what followed me home, guys. <laughs> yes, I have a disease. I know it, and I'm proud of it. But I uh, picked up another new machine, new to me, obviously not very new, uh, but something I've been looking for. So I've been looking for a good vertical bandsaw to use in the machine shop on the metalworking side from the cutting metal for some time. And I have always really liked these do-all saws. They are just at the top of the line in my book. And like I said, just been kind of keeping an eye out for one and one popped up not too terribly far away. Again, I found it on Facebook Marketplace. Person had this thing posted, had a really terrible picture sitting out in a shop. It was piled up with junk. It was so piled up with junk when I looked at the picture in the ad, I couldn't even tell if there was a table on this thing. Uh, but I decided, hey, it's not that far away from home. The price was really good. So I'm gonna go take a look at it. Rode out there and while this machine is definitely, I would say, rough, it's, it's all here. Uh, and really it's not in that bad a condition, I think, once you get past the paint job and a little bit of surface rust. So here's the story on this. There's a farmer that lives over there that had brought this home to his home farm shop. He actually had it in a shop where he was working at previously. They were getting rid of it. He bought it. He brought it home to his farm shop about 20 years ago. Didn't have three phases. Farm shop. He said he was always going to replace the motor, put a single phase motor in it never did it. He actually started to take the motor out, didn't get it even completely out and kind of gave up and it just kind of sat there. Uh, the shop was, it is an enclosed shop, uh, but it, it, the it, weather temperature changes and stuff were happening in there and it's basically set for about 20 years out in this shop. Covered in dust, of course the paint job's all crinkled off of it, uh, but when I really started looking at it and checking things out, I think this machine's gonna clean up really nice. So what it is, is this is a, the, the vertical 26 inch bandsaw made by Dual. Uh, I was able to look at the serial number right here. The serial number on it is 2640118. And I was able to decipher that serial number. The 26 at the beginning of serial number is for the 26 inch model. The 40 stands for 1940, which is when this saw was built. And the 118 is the 118th saw that they made that year. So this is a pre-World War II Dual bandsaw. If I did my research right, Dual actually introduced their line of what they called contour saws in 1938. So this is a very early version of that saw. I knew that when I was doing some research and I saw this kind of unique uh, lamp fixture over here that had the little porcelain block on it that it was an early one, uh, but I didn't know exactly what year until we were able to figure out the serial number. So this is the little lamp fixture I'm talking about, and this is a little block I'm talking. You can see this in some of the early catalogs, and I don't know exactly when they quit using this, but this is an indicator that it's one of the very early models. And you got a couple things going on here. You got the little lamp shade coming out. It still has the original light fixture. The shade is, is not on there. We'll have to figure out something on that. You got a little, uh, plug there where you can actually plug in uh, something on here if you wanted to. So you got electricity coming to right there. And then this is a, actually a little air line. So there's an air pump built into the base of this thing that generates a little bit of an air pressure and that generates a little bit of stream. So it kind of blows that material uh, out of the way for you, which is kind of a neat little uh, feature on this saw. So while the paint job on here is obviously looking pretty bad, I got this old paint that's just coming off and it looks like someone had repainted this at some time with this green paint. I think it was a dark gray color originally. Uh, but when you open up the doors, uh, it actually looks a little bit nicer on the inside, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, but you can kind of see in here that the wheels are all uh, turning. Uh, you know, we might look at replacing bearings on this. I'll take a look at that later on. Of course, uh, the bottom wheel drive, so it's hooked into the whole drive system. But uh, the wheels look like they're in decent shape. They, of course, need new tires on them. Uh, but all in all, I think, uh, think it looks like it's in, in decent shape. So one of the neat features of these saws was they had the built-in blade welder right on here. Now, I don't know the condition of this one. He tells me that it was working when he got it. Uh, of course, that was before it set outside for 20 years. But hopefully we can salvage this. Uh, the insides hopefully are all right. But 
the reason that Duol put these onto the saw itself was kind of for a neat reason. And uh, a lot of people ask about that. I posted some pictures over on Facebook and they were asking about this. So say you had a, something that you need to cut out in the middle of a part. Say you had a big piece of plate steel or whatever, and you had a shape that you need to cut out, a circle or whatever kind of shape. What you could do is you could drill a hole through the part inside the area you wanted to cut out, take your bandsaw blade, actually cut the bandsaw blade on the saw, feed it up through that hole, and then come over here, because this was mounted right here, you could actually weld the blade back together so that it was going through the part, and then put the blade back on, saw out the inside of it, and then whenever you get through, you recut your blade, pull it apart, and then you can weld your blade back together. Well, back in the, when I worked in a machine shop, we had a saw like this, and we actually did that fairly frequently. Of course, in this day and age where you have all these CNC water jets and, and uh, flame cutters and plasma cutters and uh, laser cutters and all that. Yeah, you really probably aren't cutting things out with a bandsaw near as much as you used to. But back in when this saw was built, that really wasn't an option. So it was nice to have something like that. And I imagine because I don't have any of those CNC things in my shop, at some point in time, this will probably come in handy. So again, hopefully I can salvage this thing uh, and get it back to working. Generally speaking, when I look at the insides of this saw and everything else, the insides are in pretty decent shape. It's just the outside that kind of got into the weather. So I'm hoping that mostly the problems we're seeing here are cosmetic. Time will tell. It also has right up here this really neat speed indicator. So that's tied in basically a tachometer of types. And it's telling you the, uh, it's, it's calibrated so it's telling you the surface feet per minute of your bandsaw blade as it's going by, which is what's important. You're not so much worried about RPMs, you're worried about the speed of the blade, how many feet per minute of blade is going by there. And you would adjust that based on the type of material that you're cutting, the type of blade that you have, and you can adjust that. Now this is a variable speed machine that's got a high range and low range in the transmission that has a Reeves pulley in there where you have the belts that will automatically adjust. You just crank on the side and it will speed up and slow down in variable speed fashion. So that gives you a nice little indication as to what your speed is. Talking about the speed of the saw, it has this nice little uh, piece up here. It's a little uh, job selector. You go around the outside and it tells you can pick different materials and uh, it's not it's kind of stiff, but you can see these two parts uh, rotate independently of one another. But you figure out what your material is, and you can tell what type of uh, saw blade you have, whatever in here. It'll tell you how many teeth per inch you need, what type of set and temper you need, and then it'll tell you what the, the, the speed is for the saw in uh, feet per minute, right up here. And uh, so that right there will tell you. Now, I had several people asking about this. They're saying file speed. What is that? Well, you could actually get band files, which is kind of like a bandsaw blade, but instead of a cutting blade, it actually had little file teeth on it. It was kind of like a chain uh, that kind of went around this thing, and you could use it for filing. Uh, those old uh, band files are getting kind of hard to find. I actually got the guides that, go f that you can use that with with this saw, so uh, that'll be kind of interesting if I can find me an old band file to put on here and do some filing. I uh, don't know how often I'd need to do it, but it would be kind of cool. Now, I will say, I, I, I took the guides off. I've actually been soaking those in some evapo rust and cleaning them up. It came with the guides. It came with the actual little metal pieces. I got a whole bunch of those, various different ones that, that hold them in place. And even came with a couple of extra saw guides that go on here. So nice to have all that extra equipment. Uh, one neat thing about this is this has got a hydraulic feed built into it as well. So if you're cutting a big piece and you want to actually kind of hide, have something to kind of feed the part in. Now later editions of the Duals, they actually have where the whole table will hydraulically feed in. This one here has got a fence over here and there's some chains that kind of come up from the back that you hook into this thing and you can adjust the feed rate and it kind of basically will kind of pull the part or using the fence push the part into the blade so you can have some assistance while cutting things. Uh, don't know if all this stuff works, so obviously we're going to have to get in there and figure out all that stuff, but uh, it's pretty, pretty simple when you really get down to it, so I don't think it's gonna be a big problem to get all that working again. 
Another nice feature on the saw is it has a little foot brake pedal down here. So when you're sawing and you want to stop the saw, uh, you can push on that brake and it will actually stop the wheels. If you ever work on a big band saw like this, you can get a lot of inertia in those big wheels. And when you shut it off, it can take some time to actually slow down. So if you need to stop it in a hurry or if you're just wanting to get your hands around it after you shut the machine off, you can easily press on the brake there and stop it. So anyway, I'm pretty happy about this. Uh, it is gonna be a project by all means, but hey, that's what I do. I restore machinery. That's what I like doing. That's my hobby. Uh, that's a big part of what we do at Vintage Machinery here is we find old machines, we bring them in, we do a restoration on them and get them back up the running. So I'm really looking forward to this project. Uh, there's probably a couple of things in here that I'm gonna have to jump on before this, but this is actually something that I've been needing. So it's gonna, it's gonna be pretty close to the top. Hopefully we're gonna be able to start working on this pretty soon. And uh, I'm, unless I'm really miss something while looking this thing over, I honestly don't think this is gonna to be too bad of a machine uh, to restore. It's gonna just require a lot of cleaning, a lot of removing rust, uh, gonna require, require a paint job, et cetera. We might have to make a few little parts here and there, but uh, I'm real hopeful that we can get this machine up and going fairly easily, and I think this will buy. When it's done, it'll be a nice uh, little showpiece out here in the shop to have a very early first generation do-all vertical bandsaw. I'm excited about it. So with that, that's gonna be a wrap, guys. I just wanted to kind of introduce you to this machine. Um, oh, by the way, price, $400. So uh, I think when I get through with it, it'll be worth a lot more than that. Hopefully I didn't get, hopefully I, I, uh, I can't, I'm gonna come out all right on that one. So anyway. Thanks for watching. As always, please subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. Uh, leave me some comments, what have you, and thumbs up, share it on social media, all those good things, and we will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.